Hello, welcome back. My name is Michael Kölling and you're watching the new Joy of Code, the video series to learn programming with Greenfoot. Today we will jump straight in and write a bit of code. So write the first few lines of code um, without actually talking a lot about the theory or concepts behind it. We have enough time to do that later. Let's just get started straight away and do something really practical and write a couple of lines of code. Let's get started straight away. What I do is I'm going to open Greenfoot. This is the main window of Greenfoot when no scenario is opened. So the first thing I do is I go to the scenario menu and open the scenario and I will open the scenario called Hawk Hunt. Uh, you, if you want to uh, play along and you should do this to program yourself at home, uh, you should download this same scenario. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you should head over to my blog because there you get not only the video but also the download for the scenario. I will show you where that is. Here's my web browser and up here you see is the address of my blog. On this blog site find the page for the episode 2 of the new Joy of Code videos and there you find not only this video but also the download for this scenario. If you download this, this will be a zip file. You should unzip that file and then you should be able to go to the scenario menu and use open to open that scenario and you should get something on screen that looks very similar to what I have here. And then we can get started. If I press run here, nothing happens because this hawk that I have here in my scenario, I can move it around, it's an object. It was created from this class. I can here go and create a new hawk, so I can create as many as I like, but none of these hawks will do anything because I haven't programmed them yet. Uh, we can start by opening an editor for the hawk. Um, we do this by going to the class hawk here. Remember the classes are these things on the right. Here on the world, these are the objects. That's a hawk object, that's a hawk object, and this here, the box there, is the hawk class. We will talk a little bit later about what classes and objects really are. But for now, go to the class diagram here, double click on the Hawk class, and you will get an editor that looks like this. And there is a bit of text here. We will look in more detail later about what that all means. But first, we concentrate on this yellowish area here um, where it says act. Um, this is what is called the act method, and that Whatever is written here in that white area determines what this hawk does when uh, we run our program. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to insert an instruction that tells my hawk to move. I insert an instruction by hitting the space bar on my keyboard. When I hit the space bar on my keyboard, this is what happens. I get a frame here that prompts me to insert a method name. A method is an instruction that tells my hawk to do something. And what I want you to type is type move. And as soon as we type this, we can see that here, between the round brackets, there is another word. So now I use my right arrow key on my keyboard, or you can also use the tab key or the space key, to move my cursor over into this field here where it says distance and the distance field um, asks me how far I want to move and let's say I put in a 4. So here I have now what's called a method call. A method call is an instruction that tells um, the computer what I want my hawk to do. So this says now every time, oops, sorry, every time uh, this hawk acts it moves 4 pixels forward. Let's go back here to our main screen. Here's an ACT button. If I click the ACT button, this ACT method will execute. It will be executed for this hawk. So if I click ACT, if you look very carefully, this hawk moves very slowly forward. So every time I click ACT, it actually moves four pixels forward. I also have a RUN button here. Run button just calls act repeatedly in a loop. So it calls act over and over. So if I call run, my hawk flies across the screen. It gets stuck here at the edge of the screen because 
objects and green food cannot leave the world so it can't go any further than this. It flies across the screen. Now let's try another method. Instead of moving I can write turn. Now every time I the uh, hawk acts it turns four degrees so if I run this the hawk will turn on the spot. Let's try to do both at the same time. So I put the cursor here before my turn. I hit the space bar again to get another frame for a method call and I make it move five pixels forward and then turn four pixels to the side. So every time the hawk acts it will move and turn. Let's try out what that looks like and there it flies in a circle. This is the basic technique how you write code in Stride. You always insert a frame first for uh, the instruction you want to issue. This move command is a frame. This turn command is a frame. I have inserted those. Um, and then when you go to the main window you can run your program. Here on the right is a little arrow. If I click on this arrow I see what is called the cheat sheet. The cheat sheet will show me at any point what kinds of frames I can insert into my code. So here are all the different instructions that I can issue. What we have done is with the move and turn frames they are both method calls. So here I can see that I can call a method and this in, um, symbol here at the beginning shows me the keyboard shortcut to insert the frame that I want. So I can see to call a method I insert a space. That is what we did. We hit a space and that gives me a method call frame. I can go behind a frame and hit backspace to delete a frame. So frames can be deleted and insert it with a keyboard. You should try that out. Move the frame cursor, these blue this blue line here is the frame cursor. Move it around in your program. You can see that you can move and with the arrow keys, sideways arrow keys, you can move inside the frame and you can edit these things. We can see that there are some other instructions here. They're called assignment, variable declaration, constant declaration, if, and some loops. We will, over the next few episodes, learn what we can do with those. But first, try to insert a move in a turn command and experiment with different values for the parameters. The parameters are the things between the round brackets. I have used a 5 for my move instruction and a 4 for my turn instruction. Experiment with different values and see what happens. And see how that influences what you see on screen and try to explain why that is. This is the very basics of the very first bit of start of programming with Stride. You have seen today how to open a scenario, how to open the editor for a class and how to start writing code in the ACT method by inserting frames. Um, this can be done either with a keyboard or by clicking with the mouse on the frame shortcut in the cheat sheet. Experiment with this until you feel comfortable um, moving the cursor in the editor and inserting and removing frames and then we are done for today. Okay, that's it for today. Um, play around with this a bit, experiment with it, try to change the parameters. Um, You've seen the first two statements uh, that we can use to make an object move and turn. We will come back later with the next episode and do a little bit more interesting things and also talk a little bit more about the background and the concepts of what that is really is that you've seen there and what the theory behind those statements is. But that can wait until next week. So I see you next time in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.